So today we have a very special video, more special than the rest of them, much more specialer. We have the build of our Mini Pro Dyno. They even call it the smallest benchtop dynamometer. So we will build the smallest benchtop dynamometer. I'm John Holmes and thanks for tuning in. So we have pretty much everything that we need laid out on the table except for the tools to build the dyno and the instructions to build the dyno, but I'll I'll, I'll get them if I need them. This is actually an extra steel flywheel, which we won't need it for today. So I'll just kind of set that out of my reach so I'm not tempted to grab it. So besides the parts that come with the dyno and the extra parts that I got, uh, I got an extra current sensor there. And I also got what I believe to be the um, ESC driver. So this will take place of me having a radio and just grabbing the trigger to make this go. This will actually be controlled by the computer and the computer will tell my dyno to go. Uh, that was an extra part, but uh, yeah, you'll probably want that too. It just makes it a little bit easier to do the same thing over and over and over again with this dyno. So uh, the other thing that we do need is the parts that we are testing. And since I got this little control board for my ESC, all we need is an ESC to drive our motor of choice. We will need the motor of choice that is driven by our ESC and then our battery of choice, which drives the ESC that drives the motor. I am choosing to start with a low voltage battery today, just a two cell uh, eco power 5000 milliamp hour that I just had laying around 45C they call it and what I am actually going to do over time is test with different ESCs and different batteries to see how much difference it makes if we're running let's say a 5000 milliamp hour huge battery in our crawler versus a 2000 2200 you know 3000 milliamp hour like these little guys over here you know what's going to be the difference between these i'm not going to get that today but that is the sort of information that this dyno will give us how much power do we have with this system in particular so let's get to it we have the main part of our dyno which i am going to assume that the flywheel base sub assembly bolts into all right we got some wood screws which probably means they want us to bolt it down to a table for some reason and I can tell that the motor clamps into this guy and we also have this little drive on that side. So we're going to be bolting this together in this direction. And we can actually get to all of our little countersunk holes, which I'm assuming you like, you know, screw it down to a piece of wood or whatever with. What I did not bring today was anything to Loctite this together. I would highly suggest that you use probably a blue Loctite on this. All right, so we only got four base screws, even though they got eight holes on there. We'll go in finger tight with the tip of this driver. I don't want to hear any laughs on that one. And then we go up and just snug them in a little bit more. They're pretty small hardware, so we don't want to, we don't want to barehand it too badly because we'll just strip it out. All right, so at this point, essentially we would use these wood screws or whatever these you know screws would be called and then we would drill it into a table all right so it actually balances that's that's nice it balances on the stand before anything's in there belt motor dyno right there belt motor dyno it's the belt and not the motor dyno. We're gonna be testing a motor with an eighth inch bore. You can see they uh, gave us five millimeter bore, an eighth inch bore. Next up is our motor mount. We're gonna be bolting in from this direction. There's not much sticking out. This looks like maybe five millimeters or so of thread sticking out from the backside of our motor plate. You want to make sure that doesn't go in so far that it damages the windings on your motors. Five millimeters is typically okay. Just be aware of that. If you go grabbing some some random hardware from your bench to put this together, uh, you know, let's say if you if you lost these screws, it's likely that you're gonna put a screw in too far and you're gonna damage the windings on a motor and that's always a bummer because a five cent screw damages a $20 to $150 motor not always the best day, although any day that we're live should be a great day, right? Blindly waltz my way through. And I don't even know how to waltz either. That's uh, more a foxtrot guy. So a little, little hand tight snugness there. Should that be my new band name? Hand tight snugness. Hey, everybody, we're, we're the hand tight snugness. 
And will this go down all the way? Yes, it will. So we can bolt to the back side, which is handy. Do that and like slide it in and out every time and hope we get it centered or, or undo it from here. And so we want to make sure that this is loose enough. We don't want to tighten her down yet. Loose enough in this direction and also this direction so that we can adjust our belt. But first put the belt drive on the belt, then on the other drive. And then we got to slide it together. Yeah, this is going to be real fun. We got to slide it together. That's and get it to line up. All right, not impossible. Not impossible. Sorry, Mini Pro, but I really don't like your assembly. Yeah, now I got to get this guy in sideways because the tip is slightly stripped. And all dinos kind of have the same problem, honestly. It's, it's very difficult to get everything to go together and have your drive system and also have it easy to get to quickly in and out. Uh, they probably use the belt for efficiency reasons over a bunch of gears or anything like that. But this is, yeah, I gotta get another driver. That's just not gonna work. So this is uh, one, of, one of the more real episodes here is, uh, you know, this is kind of the daily issue that you would have running equipment. There's always something that is going to be fiddly, it, it seems. All right, so we're going to try what I don't want to do first, and that is to ride it over the edge. Let's see if I can get myself out of the way enough to have a camera shot here. May not be able to. May just have to. All right, so I'm, I'm going to use the larger pulley to just force it over if I can. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It'll stretch. There we go. It popped on. It's never good to do a belt that way though. All right, still tightening. They have uh, nylock washers kind of on the backside underneath this plate, or, or I'm sorry, nylock nuts. This is a ball in, so I can kind of come in at an angle. And a little more tightening. So I got our belt aligned. That's what this sliding in and out does. It actually gets the belt aligned with the pulleys. We set our belt tension. This is when I would love to actually have a device to judge the tension with like a feeler, you know, either something that would have a deflection gauge to it or something that would tell me, you know, the, the poundage or the ounce edge with a certain amount of deflection, you know, say like a one millimeter deflection and then measure how much tension was on that side of the belt to deflect one millimeter. Uh, that would make sure that every time I set this up that I would get it exactly the same because the way that this is made, there's going to be no easy way for me to make the belt tension identical every single time unless I'm, I don't want, I don't want to stre have to stretch that belt over every time because that will make the belt looser and that'll affect my tension too. So really all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little side pressure with my finger here. You can see how it adjusts that tension in when, when we slide away from our main pulley. Finger tight. That's going to be our very uh, scientific method today is finger tight. It's too tight to get two fingers in there though. I can only use one finger tight right now. Type that in the comments or else I'll forget. That was kind of difficult to assemble. It was. Uh, this is uh, kind of interesting. So probably just an RTD uh, sensor on the end, which is essentially just a resistor that changes your uh, changes resistance as the temperature changes and it's just a loop that you like kind of wire tie around the motor that's interesting i i uh, again you know i'm kind of backseat driving this not exactly how i would do it but yeah i know that's that's not bad that'll work that'll work so we plug that in over here so they were smart enough to do the temperature sensors all two pin the next thing we need to do is get our temperature sensor working or I'm sorry, our current sensor working. And that means soldering. So we're gonna set our pretty good looking Mini Pro Dyno up at the front of the table. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna splice this and uh, do one of those numbers. So part of setting up this dyno is soldering. I was hoping that I was gonna get around it besides soldering on the leads to the motor that we're testing. But for the initial setup, there's just really no getting around some soldering. All right, so I'm gonna use the knife to push down that wire as everything solders together just until it, it solidifies. And then I can kind of look around and make sure that we got a good solder joint on all sides. Boing! My favorite thing is to make a bloody mess when I'm soldering. 
Do you like making bloody messes when you solder? Comment down below. All right, so I'm just using this knife to keep it all together while it cools. All right, so there, there should be all of our heavy-handed soldering. There she be. So let's plug this in. Bam, bam. And then this is our out. Yay, I put the ESC on the proper side. And then uh, what I'm going to do real quick is actually just plug this in. If smoke comes out, then I did it wrong. So we'll know. And then I've got another current sensor in case I broke this one, but um, this is a quick test. All right, so no smoke coming out. That's a good sign. We only got one three pin, like so. All right, so this is uh, not labeled. It does have a signal ground almost always. So this is like a receiver, but it's a USB controlled receiver. And we are going to plug it into the zero position. Yes. This is probably going to be plugged in via USB. Time to get our computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this good on the assembly. I got it assembled. It's ready to go. All we need to do is actually use it now. So I'm going to call it good. Let me know if you do have any questions before we get to the next video. And I will be sure that we add them into it. So I thank you for tuning in and have a good day.